Welcome to Happy Little Diodes. Today we're going to be fixing up this zip switch. <laughs> Welcome to Happy Little Diodes. Today we're going to be fixing up this zip stick. The zip stick's iconic design, tactile clicky micro switches, and standout colour scheme make it, in my opinion at least, a competitor for the best arcade style joystick for the Specky. It's these clicky micro switches that we're going to focus on today as these can become unresponsive after many years in the loft. Here's an example. We really want the character to start moving as soon as the micro switch clicks, but it's only when I push further and harder to the right that he starts to walk. This can be frustrating, and ultimately results with the joystick dying, as the user feels they need to push and pull really hard on it to make it work. So we need to get inside, remove all these screws, and take out the micro switches to give them a clean. Once the screws are removed, be careful when taking the base off because there'll be some wires connecting it to the top half. Those four white boxes are the four micro switches which correspond to up, down, left and right and there are two blue boxes on the left which correspond to the two fire buttons. Some joysticks have an extra PCB like this for an auto fire switch. In the case of this joystick I had to remove it to access the micro switches. It wasn't fixed in but I did use a flathead screwdriver to gently pry it away. I won't be doing any reflowing of these solder joints because I think they look okay and I know that it works. And with that out the way, we can detach one of the micro switches. In the zip stick, it's just one screw per micro switch. And once removed, we can just lift the micro switch out, being careful not to put too much tension on any of these wires. The micro switches should be attached by these spade connectors, and they do come off with a tug, but if they're really stuck, try not to just use your hands to force them off because when they give, you're going to tug on the wires. Instead use a flathead screwdriver to carefully pry them away like this. Once you get them going, they'll slide off the end very easily. By the way, take a picture or make a note of which wire is attached to which connector, so when you come to put it back together, you don't get any wires crossed. Okay, now we need to open up this small plastic box. There aren't any fixings, so take a fine flathead screwdriver or something similar and start to gently pry away. Be very careful because inside this box there are some delicate springs and thin pieces of metal. So don't get frustrated, just keep gently prying away and work your way around the outside until the top comes off easily. Now you can see the mechanism, you understand why you had to be really careful when taking this box apart. I'm fairly confident that all micro switches work something along these lines. When the button is pressed, force is applied to a spring, which eventually gives and closes the two contacts. If the connection between the two contacts isn't very good, then we're going to see poor performance like we did with this joystick. This was really awkward to do, but here I'm showing you that when the contacts are joined, i.e. the switch has clicked, we don't necessarily get continuity if the contacts need some attention like in this case. And this can be the case for many different kinds of micro switches, such as this one. You can see that the mechanism is slightly different, but ultimately the end result is two contacts get connected and we should get continuity. This is the best kind that I've come across. The contact isn't just a dome, it's kind of like a hammerhead, so the area of contact is more than just a point. I find that these are the most responsive. So now's the time to get some contact cleaner if you have it, or I'm just using um, surgical spirit. Give it a good clean with a brush, get in there, make sure that you're cleaning the head of the contact. And while you're at it, you might as well clean these spade connectors as well. Just be careful with the delicate mechanism inside. If you damage it or bend it, then it's just not going to feel right. Going back to this switch that was performing poorly, it's been cleaned like I just demonstrated, and you can hear from the beeps that it's working a lot better now. Now you just need to pop these connectors back on. In some cases, if the wires are short, you might need to put the micro switch back in place first. And put the micro switch back in place. In this joystick, there's a small plastic bump which lines up with the top right hole on the micro switch, so you know it's aligned. Replace the screw and repeat the process for the other 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 switches. Quick side note, if your joystick doesn't have micro switches like this early competition pro, you'll find it just has contacts like this. 
The same philosophy applies, just clean the contacts and you should be good to go. I can't think of a better game to test a refurbished joystick than Jetpack. It's very twitchy and it requires you to have fast reactions, so your joystick needs to be doing its best for you. This one works like a charm now, 